Hi, I'm Rod Lloyd, Columbia River Handbells. There's a lot more techniques we can use than just ringing bells in the hand and damping at the shoulder. We can do thumb damps, marts, plucks, tower swing, marts, shakes, echoes, ring touch, and other things. We're going to go over those items now to give you an idea how to do them and what the theory is behind them. This video is going to cover the musical terms that even musicians need to learn, even if you know how to read music. These are terms and techniques specific to handbells. Most music has a bell's use table at the beginning or end of the music. This allows a ringer to see what bells are needed for that particular piece. It's especially useful to see if the music requires accidentals, sharps or flats. The bells use table should be the first place you look when opening a piece of music. You can see here that the B flats and the E flats play instead of their naturals. And the B natural also plays in the treble clef. Damping is just as important to turn off the note as it is to ring it on time. Notes left to ring after the intended time to be stopped creates an unpleasant, unintended sound. Damp the bell exactly at the end of its note value unless it plays again immediately with no rest between. A thumb damp means placing your thumb on the bell casting while ringing the bell. This creates a stop sound. You have to experiment with the best place for your thumb for each size of bell to get the desired sound. It's written with a TD and indicated with dots over or under each note requiring a thumb damp. It needs to be a sound like this. Let vibrate is the exception to the damping rule. When LV appears in the music we do not damp each note until either another LV is written indicating damp all bells and start a fresh LV or an R is written indicating back to normal ringing and damping or the bullseye is the grand damp usually indicating the end of the LV section. Here you can see that we start the section with an LV and for those two measures you do not damp the bells but the start of measure 3 you damp the bells and start a new LV. Don't damp the bells through LV through measures 3 and 4 but in measure 5 we have an R indicating back to normal ringing. The mart, or martellata, a big thick triangle symbol, means gently drive the bell into the foam table. Drop it only the height equal to the diameter of the bell to produce a dull note. If an arrow up is added to the symbol, mart into the table and immediately lift the bell to reveal a little sound left in the bell. This is called the mart lift. But make sure you do have a pad on the table before you attempt to do a martellata. The, the, the bell needs to be driven into the table. I, I usually describe the diameter of the bell away from the, the table. You don't want it too high, we could damage the bells. So about the height of the diameter of the bell, just drive it into the pad to make a stop sound. We don't want the pad itself to create a sound. We just want a stopped sound is a martellata lift or a mart lift. In this case, same technique, but we're going to bounce it on the table and bounce it up again, and that's going to leave a small amount of sound in the bell to ring on. So... Again, experiment with the height. 
and the, the amount of force so you get a nice sound that's consistent with all the other ringers. The arrow down and arrow up means tower swing, which means rotate the bell down by your side, making sure the mouth of the bell rotates past facing the floor and back up to the ready position on the beats indicated. You need to step back to miss the table and make sure nothing is behind you. The tower swing involves ringing the bell and rotating it around. You need to be sure that there's nothing behind you that you're going to hit to cause a damage to the bell or to the item behind you or to an unneeded sound. Ring. This creates a Doppler effect but as the, the casting rotates around it changes the sound coming to the ear. It's important that you actually rotate the casting around not just ring it and go this way because that won't change the sound. So the, the action is ring, down and back up. Mallets Dots place over or under the notes can also mean play the notes with mallets, as indicated by the director or a footnote. Always play with two mallets for smoother sound. Strike the bell with the mallet, where the bell with the bell on the table at the same place the clapper would strike. Use the correct mallet for each bell. Newer music may also have a plus instead. When we talk about malleting, there's different mallet sizes for different sizes of bells. Make sure you pick the right size mallet for the correct bell. We want to strike the mallet on the same position of the casting that the clapper would normally strike. It's just down from the lip. If you were to hit the lip it wouldn't make the correct sound. If you hit towards the base of the casting it wouldn't make a good sound. So on the table same place. Think about it, the fact that the sound is already in the bell and you want to pull it out. In which case, pulling out the sound makes a nicer, cleaner sound than just hammering on the bell. We always like to try and use more than one mallet when we're malleting. This is, uh, we get this from the percussion section of the orchestra. They will tell us that it's a much more musical sound to have two mallets than one mallet. So instead of two, three, four, go one, two. We get a more smoother sound if it's two notes. If we're playing a rhythm, it's a more smoother sound, more musical to use two mallets.